For me, it weeds out shorts. I don't want to fight upward momentum. I don't want to be short in the face of upward momentum coming out of a sideways market. Okay? So that's really what you're doing. So then, therefore, the opposite for a negative MACD, that short-term moving average is below the longer term. So the 12 is below the 26. And that would be an indication of um, increasing downward momentum. So your histogram bars would actually be plotting below the zero. Now let me go ahead and just put that MACD on here. Okay. See how here? And let me just show you the, uh, the properties. So I like to make my, if at all possible, that solid. You can see the colors here, the 12, the 26, right? Your 12 is the twitchier of the two, you can see there, just by looking at it, 26 is the smoother, right? 12, 12 EMA, 26 EMA, and notice how when the 12, the blue, got above the red, the histogram bar started plotting above the zero line, okay? Notice when the 12 dove below the 26, the histogram sort of plotting below the zero line. Okay, so this is just reflective of this relationship. This is not reflective of whether or not they're crossing, these moving averages are crossing up and down through the zero line. This is just reflective, the histograms are just reflecting whether the 12 is below the 26 or above the 26. Everyone with me? Okay, so thank you for your question there. As far as how to put the 200 period simple moving average in, sure. Uh, you head on up to the top of your platform, insert, indicator, moving average. You want a 200 period, simple. Uh, obviously, since I have a white chart, that would be brilliant to put a, a white line on it, so I'll change it to dark blue. I like mine a little bit thicker, so I like to make it a little thicker than the thin line there. That's it. There's my 200 period simple. So insert. Indicator, moving average, consider the color, consider the thickness, make sure the 200 period is there, and make sure it's simple on the close. Okay? So that is how you put that 200 period simple on there. As far as identifying market stages, I will be discussing that in a in a in one of the videos in the series, I think it's either the next one or the fourth one. And, I, and for those of you that are already familiar with some of the things that I, that I do, um, the tool that I use is, is my own tool called the 34 EMA Wave. So some of you might actually already be aware of it. Um, some of you may not, but I will be going into detail about how to set it up. And maybe even have an indicator, ready-made indicator to... to uh, help you out with that. No guarantees, but that's something. We're always working on something interesting around here. So no guarantees, but uh, possibly. But again, the indicator that I use, this is just this is just me. This is not anything Interbank FX is doing. This is just an indicator that I that I use that I uh, I, I didn't obviously develop EMAs, but the use of this uh, trio of exponential moving averages on the 34, which is actually a Fibonacci number, is something that I do that's fairly unique. Okay, so let's see what other questions we have here. Um, got a question about the DLL. That is something important I do want to mention. Let me just, again, if you are getting an indicator from an unreliable source, now obviously if you're getting from Interbank, this is not a concern, but just don't haphazardly click on Allow DLL Imports. Uh, you're giving a lot of fairly in-depth access to your computer by checking this off in terms of the DLL libraries. I'm not a software expert programmer, nothing, but I do know enough that unless I trust the source and I need to check this off as dictated in the instructions for any particular um, study, custom indicator, I will not, unless told to do so, one, and two, unless it's coming from a reliable source. Okay? You're basically giving access to your DLL library, which is, uh, for non-geek speak, uh, pretty, pretty significant. Um, you'll notice that all the indicators that we use today can be applied 
to pretty much any time frame. I'm not dictating in any way uh, the time frames that you should be looking at. No way. It's really what you're comfortable with. But realize that um, you can you can do this type of analysis on any indicator, and you'll notice that the candlestick patterns can be even recognized on the smallest of indicator on time frames here. The M1, the minute one. Okay. Yes, the dollar Canada is also known as the loonie. Yes, absolutely, because it is uh, they have the loony bird on the currency. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. I just find that so derogatory, right? Because most people don't know that. But yes, the dollar can is also called the loony, which has to do with the loony bird. Yes, absolutely. Uh, see, we have a few more questions here. Thanks for thanks to many of you for sticking around. I appreciate that. I know there's a lot of questions, and I'm just making my way down the list. Again, for those of you that um, are ready to, to just kind of gear up for the next session, by all means, feel free to uh, call it a call it a day, and or or feel free to email me ragi horner at ibfx.com. And I'm basically just skipping to the questions that pertain to today's discussion. Uh, in all due respect, I appreciate everyone's questions, but uh, I'm just kind of sticking to the ones that pertain to today's topics. As far as pivots showing different numbers, obviously if they're not on the same pair, uh, you know, which I'm sure, I doubt is what your, <laughs> your point is, you might want to check it. I'm not sure. You might want to check your system clock. I don't know if, some, if the system clock would have to do with the way your closes are. Again, I don't want to troubleshoot because it's, that's not my forte, but you might want to discuss that with, with someone who, who would definitely be a better a source for troubleshooting that. Uh, I'm, I'm afraid I'm not that person. How do I put the CPR, or any indicator for that matter, on my chart? Sure. Uh, let's Let's remove the studies real quick here just to kind of have a what's known as a naked chart okay so I just have my candles no studies so I go over to my navigator here if you don't see your navigator on your screen if you go to view make sure that your navigator is pushed down it'll bring up this little panel right here so if I want to put the MACD traditional or the CPR on my window I just drag and drop it now that also presupposes that I've already installed it on my on my platform and that's where you can go to ibfx.com and you can then head on over to the trading tool section get a quick description of what that's the, the actual tool is and download the tool, which will then ask you, it'll prompt you to uh, save a .exe file. Okay, and when you finish installing that into your IBFX4 folder, or InterbankFX fo folder, or whatever the folder is that your, your, uh, your platform is in, restart your platform, restart the IBFX4 platform, and then you should see it, the indicator that you just installed, you should see it within the navigator window. Okay? Simple as that. I think that about covers you here, gang. Again, do uh, you have any questions about the particular candlestick patterns or any of the topics we covered here today? MACD histogram, traditional instrument monitor, pivots, a daily and weekly, as well as a CPR, um, by all means, please feel free to drop me an email and I'll at least point you in the right direction or uh, send, you, send you a response. Please, please be patient though. I, I appreciate it. All right, so again, I thank you all for your time and your, uh, and your questions. And I hope that again, it's, it's about getting that one new idea. It's about seeing one new perspective and, and that's what I shared with you today. Okay, so again, please take the time to educate yourself. This series is about really getting the knowledge to seek out more knowledge. So if we've elevated the debate, elevated the discussion, fantastic. Okay? Have a wonderful evening, and I'll see you in the next session, all right? Everyone take care.